you know, cut to the chase. A lot of people recognize this and it's not, you know, the forbidden fruit, but um, realtors do benefit from having public open houses. Sure. They meet new people on a regular basis. Yeah. That is one of the primary objectives of a realtor is meet new people. All right. Hello. Welcome to episode 146 of KT Confidential, the real estate podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Ariel. He's Adrian. Today, we're talking about open houses and open houses now being allowed again in the GTA. I don't know if it's in the entire province. I believe it might be. Yeah, it is provincial. I'm is pretty it? sure. Yeah. I think uh, well, yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I, I guess it depends on. And that could change. I'm pretty sure the whole province is kind of in the same zone right now as far as COVID is related. But wouldn't surprise me if that changed at some point. So we'll start off by saying back in March of 2020, um, the real estate boards, the Ontario Real Estate Association and the uh, provincial government got together basically and said, um, uh, you know, based on the flow of traffic that goes through most properties, this is going to be a no-no until the foreseeable future. Um, March 12, 13, something like that of 2020, we got together as a team and we said, whoop, let's cancel the next batch of open houses. And in the last year and a half, we have not done any open houses. However, yes. uh, several weeks ago, it was as the province went into whatever, I can't even keep track of these phases or whatever, but basically it was announced that open houses are now allowed with, um, I don't even know what the I think there's There's no rules are. per se. Um, well, the, it's just the, recommendations the, on how to facilitate the open house. Yeah, which includes, Safety. you know, face masks and sanitization uh, and social distancing. Now, we've kind of perfected our process since closing down open houses because let's let's face it, as realtors, and let's you know cut to the chase. A lot of people recognize this, and it's not you know the forbidden fruit, but um, realtors do benefit from having public open houses. Sure. They meet new people on a regular basis. Yeah. That is one of the primary objectives of a realtor is meet new people. And if you connect with certain people, as, as an example, if you have a nice home and it's priced well and it's advertised and marketed properly and it shows well, you could easily get 10 to 20 groups of people per day into that home. So you're meeting 10 to 20 prospective clients. Some of them, a lot of them might already have representation from a brokerage. So you're just there to provide customer service really for your seller. You're going to do a, try and do a good job of marketing that property to that person in live time, right? Um, but there are also going to be people that live on the street or in the neighborhood or that saw it on realtor.ca or on your website or whatever. And they said, Oh, this home looks interesting. Let's go and see it. And they don't have a realtor. Well, as a realtor, that's your time to connect with these people, not only to help sell the home to them and do your job for the seller, but potentially connect with those buyers and offer your services to make their lives easier and helping them purchase a home. So there is a benefit for a realtor to do that. And just to clarify on that point, because a lot of people say that's the only reason that real estate agents do it. And perhaps for some, it is the primary reason. I don't know. But um, that point applies to everything we do. It applies to the sign in the lawn. It's there to people know the house is for sale. It's marketing. But it's also there to promote ourselves. It applies to... Uh, the listing online, the Facebook ads we buy, it's multi-purpose. So it's it's not for selfish reasons. It just indirectly results in that. Selfish reasons are 
putting your face on the side of a bus. Yeah. Right. Which is um, fine. That's what you want to do. That's the way you want to market yourself. Yeah. I mean, you know, our buddy Sam McDaddy, you can see, you can see his face many, many places in, in Mississauga. Cause he spends a lot of money on that print and whatever advertising. It's not our thing. Um, but anyways, so, you know, when we had to shut down open houses, all of, first of all, all of a sudden it freed up a ton of time for realtors on weekends, because let's face it, our open houses were three hours long from two to five, which means essentially from one to six on Saturday and Sunday, that's all you're doing. And they're tiring. You're on your feet that entire three hours. You're talking a lot. And, um, you know, you get home at six, six thirty. you're hungry. So you have some dinner and you're, you're wiped. I was anyways. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Well, one to six, I would but... say is conservative estimation yeah. of time because you've also got, you know, once you're done, you've got to keep track of everybody that came through, follow up with them, et cetera. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. A lot of that might be That's done true. on a Monday or whatever, but. That's a good point. Very so anyways, we, we shifted focus because now that we can't be in the homes, we figured out a way to connect with people virtually. And now we run Facebook live um, virtual open houses. Now on the day, the property is actually listed. So, so those that tune into our Facebook page, they get the, essentially the first look of the property while it's still available, right? Like, cause in previous times, if we list a property on Wednesday and are having an open house on Saturday, there were many, many times where the house was already sold or sold conditionally. Yeah. So those that planned to go to the open house um, didn't even get an opportunity to purchase the property. Yeah. So, so anyways, you know, business has changed and I don't know that a lot of realtors have actually adapted to it. So I'm curious to see if those realtors that didn't adapt end up going back to the old school way of doing those in-person open houses. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because there are open houses happening again. And I'm super curious as to why. And I'm super curious as to what the, what the audience thinks. You know, what does the average consumer feel right now having gone through a year and a half of pandemic and, you know, the world being upside down, are open houses, in-person open houses, necessary? And how do you feel about it? Would you, would you attend them? Do you feel like we should be doing them as a seller? Do you feel like we should be doing them? As a buyer, do you feel like we should be doing them? Or do you feel like there is enough online that if you really like the house and you're really in the market, that you are going to schedule a private visit where you and your realtor are the only ones in the house and you're doing so safely. Right. I think there's value to everything. I mean, I think there would be value to ha- having somebody sitting at a desk in the house all day, every day of the week, because you might just get somebody that wants to walk in. So the question becomes, but that's a true where, model home, Adrian. Yeah. Where is your time best spent and what's the most effective methods and how are people shopping? And this topic relates back nicely to last week's episode where we were, we were talking, uh, the discussion was about customer service, but as it relates to online shopping, because now so many people are, are, have adapted to, doing things online from grocery shopping to clothes shopping to hire, you know, shopping for a real estate agent and searching for people they want to work with, whether it's products or services that um, that model is going to inevitably uh, make its way into real estate. So I think I'd, I'd say the vast majority of real estate agents are going to start doing public open houses as soon as they're able to, um, or as soon as they feel comfortable doing it. Cause some people are concerned still. Yeah, but it's not um, just the real estate agent. It's not the realtor's no, only no, I decision. Know. Like the, but I'm saying I'm, that if I'm a seller right now, do I want a bunch of strangers un, potentially unqualified strangers and quote unquote, looky lose, uh, coming through my property. 
Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying in general, because you said, I wonder how many people are going to start doing it. And I'm relating that to agents. I think most agents probably want to, most real estate agents probably will do it, assuming their clients are on board with it. But I think that's, I, I think a lot of that is because they haven't realized the way the market's going and how effective doing things differently can be now. How the, I mean, it also depends on demographic. I mean, if you're selling a home in a senior's retirement area where it's like 50 plus community, you know, maybe that demographic isn't as tech savvy and that would be a good option. But, you know, if you're just in an average area where you're, you know, in a, like us dealing in the, in the burbs where the average age is kind of mid thirties, uh, most of those people have, uh, become very comfortable shopping online. So if you make well, those and, available to them, they're good. And to that point, um, it depends on the property in the sense that if, as an example, in Halton region, if you were to list a two-story townhome for $650,000, you would probably have a lineup of people at the open house. Um, if you're listing a $4 million property in Oakville, you know, how many people genuinely are going to show up to a home like that for an open house, but then also how many people showing up to a home like that just went for a stroll, got an ice cream and saw the sign and just want to be curious, you know? So oh, that's, and that's the thing in that higher end market, they're not doing open houses in the vast majority of times. Most of the very wealthy people that I've dealt with, they don't want open houses. They don't want random people walking through their house. So if these people are on board with it, what's, you know, why are the other people not recognizing those changes? I'm, I'm really surprised. Like when we shifted to our virtual open houses, one of the executive decisions that you and I made was to invest in having a 3D virtual walkthrough available for any property that we listed for sale. And this is great technology. You can literally plop yourself anywhere in the house. You can zoom in, you can see you can see very good details about the property. Um, you get a floor plan. You can walk through that floor plan in 2D or 3D. Like it really gives you a sense of the home and you can quickly see the layout, the size and everything that you need to make an informed decision. And if you still like what you see at that point, then you're wanting to go and see it in person. So, you know, why as a consumer, as a purchaser, why would you waste your time going to see homes that after going through it virtually, you just don't like for whatever reason? Um, so I'm really surprised at the fact that we are not seeing, you know, more companies, more brokerages, more franchises implementing these processes to make a purchase decision online don't get me a lot started easier. On that. <laughs> they do. you're, you're going to go down do. an anti-franchise oh uh, uh, discussion That's a whole here. Another podcast. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, Adrian's ambition is to uh, turn KT Realty into a um, multi-store multi-operation, multi-location uh, business to expand our services right across Ontario and ultimately the country, but providing these type of services that we do as a boutique team um, at a mass scale. And um, consistency. You consistency. Just, I wish there well, was high, more consistency where you know level, what you're getting a high level of customer service, a high level of value features. Yeah, uh, sorry. I, should, I shouldn't assume people think that when I say consistency, I mean a, a high level of quality service in a consistent manner. <laughs> Which is hard to get in any, in any industry. Yeah. yeah, well, and the process of having to interview people to find the people that will provide it is not fun either. But that's off topic. 
<laughs> so, so it'll anyways, be interesting. I mean, to your to your question, I I would really appreciate people chiming in to tell us their opinion of open houses, uh, how it's changed, uh, if it's changed since the pandemic, and whether they would attend as buyers or as we call them in the car business, tire kickers. Or you said looky loo. What was that? Looky loos. Looky loos. You never heard that. No. Or uh, as a seller, do you feel like there would be value to that? Uh, and would you want people walking through your house that weren't qualified? We we brought up this topic in, I can't remember if it was a tea meeting or how it came up. And, and one of our realtors said, well, let's give, um, let's give the option to sellers. And I, you know, I think there's something there because you want to keep people happy, but at the same time, you know, it is that going back to that consistency thing, like why did you do a public open house for these people and not these people and et cetera. Um, but to me, it's also as silly as this sounds because we're in now, you know, September of 2021. So a year and a half into this pandemic and I'm still thinking about the safety of our staff and our sellers. I don't know if we're having a public open house, who these people are, and if they fill in a COVID questionnaire, if they're being truthful. Um, sometimes they might not even know that they're sick or that, you know, they're not well or, or whatever, for whatever reason. And, and do you want to expose yourself, your sellers and your home uh, to all of these things. So, so I think that's really important to, to keep in mind, um, whether it's as a realtor or as a consumer as to, you know, how are we going to proceed in, in the future? I'm, I'm leaning to the, it's probably going to go back to normal at some point route. I'm um, still undecided. I, I don't know that they're necessary. But I don't think that is the right way. And I don't, think that's the the, I don't think that's the right answer. Well, what I think is and, really important too, as I mean, humans, but as specifically as business owners is, um, you know, making decisions, implementing changes, but also being humble enough and aware enough to recognize when decisions were either incorrect or times have changed and you now need to change your way of thinking to, uh, to, you know, come up with a different idea. It's okay to change your mind, but it's important that you implement change when you see an opportunity. I wonder if at some point somebody will perfect the virtual open house process and make it like, I don't know if it's the Ontario Real Estate Association or the Canadian Real Estate Association or the boards or the big franchises or whatever. But why, after a year and a half, why hasn't anybody, any, anybody with any clout come to the table and say, here's the new way of doing the open house. Let's get it standardized right across the board we just had this discussion there's nobody no governing bodies or brokerages that care about that they care they, care. they don't care they, they but, exist but they don't care well they the, the way the industry is structured and the way that traditional brokerages are structured is that they don't have consistent level of service they don't that's not their job their job is to you know depends on which organizations we're talking about but Nobody will ever do that. There will be tech companies that come in and implement st stuff. That's who will make the changes. Just going to put you on uh, mute And for those a changes will take effect just due to demand from the customers. Anyways, we got to wrap this up. Can you hear me? I can. I yeah, chat so, somebody. Spe yeah, speaking we of virtual open houses, Sylvia I know, just I, came to oh, pick that's up. That's one of the her, reasons I need to get wrapped up. But um, so anyways, chime in, let us know your thoughts on open houses and that's it. Episode 146. Well, the other, be before we just wrap it up, I also want to hear about Hang on. people. Is that Sylvia? That have... Is she leaving? Yes. Did she get the thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of virtual open as Sylvia came, so we have mics uh, for for our realtors to use. So she came and picked up, uh, picked up the kit. 
Um, how, how ironic. Anyways, um, for those of you that have watched our virtual open houses, and if you haven't, go onto our Facebook page and watch some of the ones that have uh, posted, because when we do it, it stays live on our Facebook page. So I'd love to hear your feedback on how you think, as an audience, how do you think we could improve them and make them more valuable to you? Because we can only see what we can see and what we think, but ultimately we're not the ones making that purchase decision or you know, we're not at the, uh, on the other side. And if we don't hear your feedback, we, we can't implement improvement. So um, if you've watched them, if you've sat in on any of our virtual open houses, chime in, leave us a comment. And if you haven't, go onto our Facebook page, watch some of the past ones, um, because all of our realtors would love that feedback. So, well, and just so to summarize, go. we haven't even really said what they are. So to finish on that, it's a live video. Currently, we host it on Facebook. We've looked at other platforms and may make adjustments there too, but a live video, realtor walking through the home, showing the home, the live chat is enabled so you can ask questions, engage with the real estate agent. Uh, so basically you're being uh, receiving a tour of the home live, live that you can engage with. And then that video is just uploaded to the Facebook page after right. the live saved is done. So you can, yeah. yeah, it's saved as a post. So you can go back and watch it at any time. It's worked well for us. We've received good feedback, but we, you know, a constant process of improving and your feedback is important to that improvement structure. So, so leave us a comment. Thanks for listening. Episode 146, KT Confidential, and um, we'll see you next time.